Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is finally here, and early indications are it's going to be a banger of a year. The multiplayer so far has been so much fun, but as I mentioned in my controller settings video, with the new Call of Duty comes a whole bunch of new settings, and it's just a good time to kind of reassess and make the game as good as it can possibly be, which is why in this video I'm going over the very best graphic settings for consoles for Black Ops 6. And we start with the display settings. The top option here is for 120Hz refresh rate. This just means it allows us to get 120 frames per second. And obviously we want this switched on if you do have the option. On older generation consoles like PS4 and Xbox One, you're not going to have this option. And you're not going to have this option if your monitor or TV doesn't allow it either. On top of that, even if you are on newer gen consoles, if you play in 4K, the consoles actually won't allow you to play on 120 hertz. So I'm playing on 1440p with 120 hertz refresh rate. For brightness, I've gone on 65. This makes everything nice and visible and mixed with all the other graphic settings we're going to get into is a nice blend. Now, I would recommend going into your console settings and actually disabling the HDR settings. This way you can make the tweaks to the visuals by yourself without having a setting kind of overriding all of that. So as long as this setting is disabled, whether you are on Xbox or PlayStation, we can go back to Call of Duty and mess around with the brightness and all the other settings we're going to talk about. Now, before we get into the rest of the settings, if you want to unlock the brand new Dark Matter, Abyss and Nebula camos in Black Ops 6 or grind them extremely quickly in bot lobbies, be sure to check out Mitch Cactus. They're the biggest and most reliable in Call of Duty, which will help you grind out the weekly events, camos and all the unlocks completely legitimately. You can enjoy highly discounted COD points at up to 80% off. They have over 10,000 verified Trustpilot reviews and you can use code SPRING for 5% off. Now let's get back to the settings. As we go over to quality, I recommend switching off world motion blur, weapon motion blur and depth of field. For the top two settings here, we just don't want any blurriness basically. We want the game to be as clear as possible and for depth of field, this ensures that when we aim in, we don't get blurring around our aim. So this just increases the chances of us seeing someone run past or come into frame or something like that. For fidelity FX cast, I recommend switching this on. This is just some inbuilt software that can sharpen the images for us. So it reduces some of that blurriness that can occur. Something to keep in mind is that in my experience, switching this on too high actually reduces the frame rate by just a couple. That being said, I recommend somewhere between 50 and 80. I've gone for 65. But if you are on older generation consoles, I recommend switching this way lower to somewhere between 10 and 20 or maybe off altogether. For on-demand texture streaming, I recommend going on minimal. This ensures that we get the best connection and ping possible and doesn't have a massive effect on the quality of the visuals in my opinion. For field of view, we definitely want this higher than the default 90 and certainly at least 100. I personally would go up to somewhere between 105 and 110. As always with field of view, remember that the higher you go, the more demand that's going to put on your system, so you're going to get lower frames per second. For ADS field of view, I recommend going on affected. This makes it so when we aim in, we're at the same field of view that we've just set up here. Otherwise, it would default to 80 or 90. For weapon field of view, put this on wide. The weapon looks smaller so we can see more of the environment. And then for camera movements, put these on least, which is 50%. And then the rest, you can kind of leave default or change. They're not too important. Then we want to head over to interface. So here you can change a bunch of stuff that you might find annoying. You even have the option to skip kill cams now. On top of that, you can take off tool tips and tutorials and things like that. But the key thing I recommend changing is over on readability and color customization. Now, this is supposed to help people with color blindness, but actually I find that down here on color filters, it can make the game look fantastic, switches up the saturation a little bit, and generally just makes things pop a little bit more. Obviously on PC, they have a bunch of filters they can use, whether it's with Nvidia or someone else. But for console players, this is actually a great shortcut to getting a very nice image. So I recommend going filter two, putting the togs on both, and cranking the intensities all the way up to 100. Going over to gameplay HUD and safe area, I recommend putting this on as narrow as possible. This brings in your HUD settings a little bit closer to the center of the screen, and most importantly, it does this to the minimap, meaning your eyes don't have to track as far into the corner to see what's going on. For minimap shape, put this on square. This gives us about 25% extra area that we can see. And then that's the final important setting. The rest of these are very much up to you. They're not super important, and actually they're kind of subjective. They're not going to make a huge difference to the game. So hopefully this makes your Black Ops 6 look a lot better and improves your time on the game. Now that we've got the game looking beautiful, why don't you join me over in this video for the best controller settings for Black Ops 6 as well. 